much. So thank you. Um, and and I'll I'll be introducing uh, George in a moment, our, our uh, fearless leader, as we uh, as we like to call him here. Um, it's actually a really a fun fun place to work. Is um, even though um, most a lot you know the issues that we grapple with and the projects we deal with are very serious and complicated. Um, uh, you know, we really treat each other as family here and, um, and try to have a lot of fun while we're doing it. And George sets that tone, um, both in terms of, kind of the, the family friendly atmosphere and, um, um, and the, you know, the levity, the, you know, because we can't laugh at ourselves sometimes and all you can do is cry. Uh, <laughs> so, um, so I'll, I'll say actually introduce George and then talk a little bit about myself. I think that probably makes more sense. So, um, so, so George, um, and the 30 plus year um, uh, career in economic development, starting out at DTE, and he'll tell you about some of the entry level, uh, uh, well, maybe, maybe not so much entry level, but um, non um, uh, glorious jobs that he had uh, when he first started out um, in their management track. But for, um, um, for the end of his time at DTE, George was in charge of um, the marketing and the um, um, economic development. Uh, divisions and really um, developed a reputation, um, you know, for you know, for his integrity, for his ability to get projects done, um, and um, and just for you know kind of the ability to piece together, um, you know, the complexities of working in this regional environment because DTE is not just a utility for the city, but a utility for a whole region and for um, a great part of the state. So, um, so George's kind of a private sector background and um, and, and the. Um, achievements that he had in that have really been a huge benefit to us here um, at, at our at our nonprofit organization. Um, for the last um, eleven years, just yeah. over ten, <laughs> just over ten, yeah, almost eleven. Um, George and I actually, this is ironic. We actually started here about a month apart from each other, um, back in in two thousand and uh, two. Yeah. Um, I started in December two thousand. One and George started in January 2002, and I was worried I was going to get fired uh, <laughs> because this speaks a little bit to the um, political change. I had literally just come on. George was replacing the person who had hired me. Um, you know, it was a new mayor. I had worked for the old mayor. Um, you know, lowest person on the totem pole. And I was And um, the, from the moment I met him, I knew that uh, he wasn't that kind of guy. And um, we, we, I haven't worked here the whole time, but um, but we, um, it's fantastic. I'm lucky that we, you know, we both started about the same time. And in that, in the period that George was here, he's actually held a number of, of hats. He's been our president and CEO for the whole, you know, 10, 10 years or so. Um, but he was also um, not only the uh, Chief Development Officer for the city at one point um, in the last five years, but also then, um, I don't know if you technically were the rear group executive, the rear group executive for Mayor Bay for a while, yeah. Um, and so there was a period of about three or four years um, where George wore an official hat as a mayoral appointee in the mayor's office, as well as our president and CEO. And I'm sure he'll talk a little bit about what those challenges, uh, those leadership challenges were like. I like it here. Yeah. <laughs> you, you can tell right now he's only got one job, and um, that's the way we uh, we like it, too. Um, so it's, just, it's just such a pleasure to work for him, and I know that um, you all will really um, just enjoy the, the kind of talking with him. Um, I um, uh, have, so, you know, my, my kind of career path and how, how why am I here today? Um, you know, how did this happen? Um, really, I mean, so as, as uh, Brian said, I started out um, uh, with an uh, at McKinsey and Company. I graduated from Ford School of Public Policy with a master's degree in public policy. And at the time, um, for personal reasons, I really wanted to stay in Detroit. Um, and there weren't a lot of connections between the UNM Public Policy Program and employment opportunities in the city. And so I, um, uh, you know, I am a very practical person and McKinsey was hiring on campus and they had an office downtown and it paid well um, and they wanted me. <laughs> so um, so it seemed to make a lot of sense. And, 
Um, you know, as I welcome back now, um, um, it, it was it was a it was a great company to work for. It was in the right fit for me. Um, I I um, had interned in the Mayor, Mayor Archer's office and worked for um, a group executive there that, um, that that mentored me a little bit, uh, named David Smithra. And um, while I was working at McKinsey, David and I maintained a relationship and. You know, we talked a little bit about the kinds of things that I had, hoped, you know, wanted to do with my life and the kind of impact I wanted to have in Detroit. There happened to be a job available in the mayor's office um, working in economic development, and um, uh, I interviewed for it. I was 24 years old at the time, um, zero economic development experience. <laughs> uh, really, my whole work experience had been six months at McKinsey. I have no idea how I got the job. I really don't. I do think enthusiasm and um, some, you know, subject matter knowledge goes a long way. Um, and um, uh, Gloria, my boss at the time was a woman named Gloria Robinson, who um, had a similar role to George as kind of a, a group executive for economic development. And she, I think she took um, a big leap of faith that I would just work my butt off and, um, and use it as a learning opportunity. And working for a politician, I've worked for a politician twice now, once for Mayor Archer and once for a state representative um, uh, in Southwest Detroit. And, um, you know, when you work for a politician, you have to be willing to kind of stand for the things that they stand for. And that can be difficult. <laughs> um, they, you, you know, humans are not infallible. We make mistakes. And, um, but that's part of, I mean, that's part of the um, um, learning, the learning and the kind of maturity process is can you, um, can you defend, you know, your, your, your leader, um, especially if they're, if they're elected official. I mean, I think in some cases, corporations and nonprofit organizations, that's the same thing. George and I don't always agree, but um, the integrity of this organization is extremely important um, to me and um, and to all of us, and so we back each other up, and um, and that's, I think, a big part of, of learning how to be a, a leader. Um, and in both cases, um, you know, the, the politics of the city of Detroit are not as simple. They're very complicated. We're going to talk a little bit about that, too. There's lots and lots of different interests. Um, and particularly when you're a young woman who um, did not grow up in the city with limited kind of life experience, um, you can walk into um, a lot of situations that, uh, you know, a person with more experience would have known better <laughs> about. And, well, you know, having walked into some of those experiences, um, you know, having been asked at community meetings, you know, what right I had to be there, um, those, those kinds of challenges, while they um, might be difficult in the moment, end up building character and the ability to kind of deal with, with uh, more difficult challenges as they as they come along and I think a lot of it's just having some perspective about um, the different um, viewpoints that people are coming from and what those people want um, and, and why they're taking the stance that they're taking um, why they may be being uh, rude um, or you know in, in some cases you know um, um, confrontational and trying to have a um, uh, trying to have a balanced um, understanding of where folks are from. I think that's the that is really the, the greatest leadership because people disagree with stuff that I do all the time with what George does. But I think it's about understanding where folks are coming from and, and having a professional and um, uh, uh, fact driven um, decision making process that you can go back and point to. And, um, and not having it be about personalities or politics or those kinds of things. And that that is, is hard, and I think it takes um, it takes time. It takes being in the right environment. And George has really developed that environment here at this organization, where everything is really about um, that you know a fact based decision making approach. Um, trying to be mindful of politics, but not being driven by politics. Um, and that's just been. You know, as someone who's relatively young and in a significant leadership position here, knowing that that's having that environment makes, um, you know, my own um, uh, counsel to the staff that work under under me, um, with me, um, you know, it, it, it's um, it, you know, you kind of 
kind of know that you're you're in this a safe space and what the rules of the of the game are, and they are um, you know ones that are based on integrity. Um, so I, I after the mayor's office, I really felt it was important to have more practical experience. It's really well, it's one of the things now. You know, I kind of sit sit here and I realize it's really easy for everyone to have an opinion on everything, um, and maybe they've never um, actually had to do some of the things that they have opinions about. And it's, you know, when you're uh, in your early 20s and in the mayor's office, and you go around that mayor's office card, you wield a lot of power, um, but you may not actually know what you're talking about. <laughs> and one of the, so one of the things that I really uh, felt it was important to continue to have, um, to have people respect my um, decision-making process, was I felt like I really needed practical experience in the stuff that I was trying to pontificate about or set policy about. So. Um, so I came here as a project manager, and I worked on a number of projects, and um, and really, you know, learned how you know how we build a road and what the um, process is to get money to do technical development projects, and just how difficult it is to do some of the things that um, you know to, to folks who aren't immersed in it. It seems um, you might might seem simple, or might seem that it's just a, a lack of skill or something that's preventing success. Um, and then. Um, and then George let me leave so that I could go follow my uh, dream of actually working a policy-related job. And I, I, um, I worked in the state house for four years as chief of staff to elect a state representative from Southwest Detroit. And that was a great opportunity because it was my kind of a first chance for me to um, build an office from from we didn't know what, what we were doing. Like we had no I mean, day after day, Stephen and I would look at each other and say. There's no, there's no like handbook they give you on how to be a state rep or how to set up your office or what it is you're supposed to do. You're literally just trying to use your best judgment um, to figure it out. And um, I would say that what what guided um, us and, and how we how we spent those four years um, working together with, with the um, volunteers and the other staff um, was really just some, some grounding and some strong principles about why we were there. We weren't there to further careers in politics. Uh, he has never, he hasn't run for any other elected office since then. Uh, we weren't there uh, to enrich ourselves. We weren't there to actually hang out in Lansing. We were there um, to try to get better representation for the constituents back in Southwest Detroit, to further some community and economic development goals, and to try to build some capacity and you know, work with some of the organizations in Southwest Detroit to build up their capacity. And we just used that decision-making framework in evaluating the things that got thrown at us. And so um, it was a really, it was a great experience, um, but it was very clear to me that I didn't, much like I didn't want to spend my life at McKinsey, I did not want to spend my life in Lansing. Um, and so um, uh, George had basically called me every year that I was gone and said, ready? <laughs> so I came back here and I've spent um, the last few years uh, working both in kind of policy and strategic directions and then leading our business development group. And I would say the greatest leadership challenge for me is that even though, you know, when I worked in the legislature, um, you know, in any, we, you know, I had a person directly report to me and we had kind of a cadre, the, the, the entire budget for state legislative office is less than $100,000. And that goes to pay for two full-time staff people and all your expenses. So um, we relied a lot on volunteers and interns and being smart with making those dollar stretch. Um, so, you know, to, I had some experience managing folks and managing teams, but it's very, very different when you have 10 people who directly report to you and, um, and how you uh, develop your own kind of skills and abilities to let them go and, and be leaders themselves. Um, you know, and, and I too, this is again something that George has done a great job of. I've actually turned over to him in, in about 30 seconds. Um, you know, George gives us enough room we can go and, and do things that we feel passionately about that, that are, are um, you know, uh, driven by good decision making. Um, but it's a lot of rope. <laughs> and and he, he trusts us to be um, uh, smart enough to, to know when we need to come back and ask for help, when we need to come back and ask for guidance. Um, and, um, and so, I, you know, it's, 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 hard, it's hard, you know, particularly when you um, set expectations for excellence and you know that you're, you know, when my, when my folks are out in the community or 
representing me. Do you see? They're also representing me, and it reflects on me, it reflects on George. And you have to have a lot of faith in people, and cultivating the people that you work with, and building up that um, trust, and um, and and seeing where they need skills development. It's not something they teach you how to do in school. Um, it's really hard, um, and it's something that I feel like I I have to work on every day. And I. I will say, you know, it's been a great um, four years, you know, in, in terms of being in that leadership role, and um, I have never felt more, um, uh, you know, my team's not perfect, but I really feel like um, we work well together, we're working as a team, um, and that has taken the time to, to, to build those relationships, and it's, it is to ask, it's just as important as anything that we do for a client. Um, is, ten, is figuring out how to build those relationships and that trust because it means we could do that much more and be that much more effective. And um, uh, so that's, I mean, that's like my big, like,